We are one of the largest telecos in the market in Uganda. We offer a wide range of services, as most of you would know. We offer voice and data services, as well as Airtel money services, to mention but a few. The topic today, which we'll be focusing on specifically, is on e-commerce and digital connectivity and how it has highly impacted our economy and the, and the globe across. And we've seen it over the past 10 years, and we continue to, continue to see its effect across, across the SMEs and across the world. We've seen a massive change in how we perceive businesses and how we actually do businesses, moving from your traditional businesses to your more online-based types of businesses. And I've got a, a panel of experts with me here today who will be guiding us through this discussion and going more in depth in, into this particular topic. And I would like to encourage you to join this particular discussion by posting any questions, comments, or feedback on the chat window that is available or on any of our social media platforms. And we'll be sure to pick them up during the Q&A session of this webinar. So without much further delay, I would like to introduce you to our panel of experts. First is one of our very own, Mr. Alan Semakula, who is our Enterprise Director at, Air at Airtel Uganda. Alan is a seasoned business executive, coach, insp inspirational thought leader in the commercial space with a proven track record for producing exceptional results. Alan has a career that spans over 15 years in the commercial space, having worked with Total, Lafarge, Diego, and now with Airtel. During his free time, Alan doubles as, as an entrepreneur within the leisure and hospitality sector. Next with me, I've got Mr. Tony Otoa. Tony is the chief executive for the Stanbic uh, Business Incubator Limited. Tony is an experienced public affairs practitioner with a demonstrated history of working in the oil and energy industry with the main focus on local and national content. Tony is skilled in negotiation, business development, leadership and management, and public speaking. Tony has a strong administrative professional Sorry, Tony is a strong administrative professional with a BSc in, in, in international relations and an LLM in international law from Oxford Brookes University. Tony has successfully established the Stadmic Bank uh, Business Incubator Limited as a leading SME incubator in Uganda, helping build capacity for hundreds of SMEs across the country. And finally, we have Mr. John Kalkungulu Walugembe. John is the Executive Director of the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises Uganda, FSME, the umbrella body for all SMEs in Uganda. The organization boasts of a membership of over 25,000 small and medium-sized businesses all over Uganda. He possesses an MBA from the University of Oxford, a Master's of Public Administration from Harvard University, and a first class honors bachelor's degree in science from Macquarie University. John is the former executive director of the Uganda Small Scale Industries Association. Before that, he headed the business development services development department of the Uganda National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He is also a judge and mentor for the African Entrepreneurship Award, a judge for the ICCO Agribusiness Challenge, and a judge for the Pakasa Youth Awards. John was also a judge for the fourth annual NT100, a business competition highlighting 100 of the world's most inspiring examples of technology for social good, organized by the UK-based charity, Nominate Trust. So guys, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time to come and sit down and talk through this particular topic. Thank so, yes. So my first question is going to go to you, Alan. Okay. So mm -hmm. Alan, telecos are the center of delivering the much needed services to facilitate uh, growth in e-commerce and facilitated SMEs. What's your comment on e-commerce and digital connectivity and the opportunities that they've posed for SMEs? I mean, thanks, Martha. Um, I mean, my first comments would perhaps be uh, links to, to the past say 12 15 months okay that have sort of opened up the digital space uh, uh, and e-commerce to smes right so uh we've just come out of a period where i mean the world uh, actually we're more or less still in the same kind of space where the world has been forced to 
to lock down and uh, distance uh, each other socially. So from an e-commerce perspective, uh, I mean, before we used to talk about checks, uh, physical uh, cash, uh, we're seeing that, uh, I mean, this is all evolving into digital payments, right? Uh, which are safer, okay, uh, from, a, from a health perspective, uh, making payments uh, uh, using platforms such as Airtel Money, um, basically uh, is becoming a norm, right? And for an ESME, it's a business. It's about how, how you sell uh, uh, your product or service and get payment uh, for it. From an e-commerce per perspective, the world is moving digital. I think a time may come where the balance in terms of the scale between cash and digital payments will probably shift to about 90% uh, digital payments, uh, which is not the case today. I think from a connectivity uh, perspective, I mean, I'm looking at, at SMEs today, and uh, I think, uh, Tony, you, you could correct me, but I think Uganda is probably one of the most entrepreneurial countries in the world, uh, meaning that I think we've got such a, a healthy base of SMEs. And today, look at our population. Uh, majority of them are young. I mean, young youth uh, below the age of 30. And a lot of them, I mean, when I look at a lot of this new generation, they're not really looking at, at perhaps going through the corporate career like uh, myself and yourself have done. But they're thinking of starting up businesses uh, using social media uh, as, as, uh, as new stores, as, as new shops. Uh, I mean, platforms such as Snapchat or Facebook that used to be a ways of sharing uh, socially are becoming a, a key critical uh, business places today. Uh, I, I think uh, that's one of the other evolutions I think we're seeing from the SME uh, side of it. And if the shops have gone digital, then some of the things I think we've taken for granted in the past are becoming necessities. I mean, the internet for one, right? Um, I mean, if you shut down the internet today, a lot of those SMEs that are, that are selling their services or goods uh, off these social media basically cease, uh, cease to have a shop or, or a store. So it's one of those new uh, trends that are, that are impacting uh, the SME market. So uh, the internet has become uh, a key critical part of the connectivity for SMEs such as those. Then I look at a segment, uh, some of the FMCGs call them Horeca, hotels, restaurants, cafes, right? I mean, Uganda went into a lockdown, I think, on 18th of March last year, right? Uh, and even after it opened up, a lot of the SMEs, I mean, if you go to some of these arcades downtown have actually closed shop and perhaps are operating remotely, which now, again, a lot of SMEs are in this hotel, restaurants, and, uh, and, and cafe segment, right? These, for me, have become the new virtual offices. I mean, if you're a cafe owner or restaurant owner and you've got Wi-Fi in your premises, you've basically become an office for an SME. I mean, all it needs is a backpack with a laptop, and then <laughs> he's, he's at work, right? So again, the internet is becoming a key part of life. I mean, it's, it's the office. Yeah. Then you think of, I mean, I don't know if you've heard of the terms of like uh, internet of things, right? So. When I think of a SIM card, right? Uh, and this was before I started working with, 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 this, with this great company, Airtel. I, I used to think of a SIM card as simply a, a means of having a chip that allows me to talk uh, to somebody else, pick up the call, uh, phone, call Martha, have a conversation, or perhaps get data and communicate on the internet. But this chip, with technologies uh, such as this 4G network that Airtel has can do a lot more, right? So, I mean, not too long ago, I was speaking to a gentleman, I think it's called Ronald Katamba, I think from a Jaguza farm, farm something. 
I mean, he's, when we're, we were debating, I mean, he's, a, he's an SME, right, uh, offering uh, services in the agricultural uh, sector. And we're thinking, you know, if you have a farm with, say, a thousand animals somewhere in, I don't know, Mubende or, or Lira, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and I mean, you're, you're, you're back here uh, in Kampala, right? I would say, if you have a farm, you're a farmer, you're probably an SME as well. You'd like to know, I mean, how, how are your animals doing? What's, what's the health? Are they feeding right? Uh, today, digitization has made this possible. You can actually have a chip, right? Put it into a tag on an animal, put a SIM card into it, and it sends information right back to your center to basically be able to foretell whether the animal is eating well, is it falling sick? And so you start predicting and getting ahead of the curve. Mm. And by doing that, I think you end up bring up this agricultural segment as well, because you end up having quality animals, quality, quality output, uh, which basically, uh, again, uh, can be enabled uh, using digitization, mm. right? Uh, and the 4G network, such as the one with Airtel. And then you also have, I mean, a lot of these SMEs that guys who sell soda, say, like on the, on the roadside the shop or the like, I think as, a, as an SME, I would love to know the trends during the day, right? At what particular times do people order their favorite uh, soft drink or water or the, or the like, right? Uh, you, again, can have a chip placed into that cooler, right? And it will tell you uh, the time when a particular bottle is picked off a shelf. The times you'll be able to tell maybe it's during when temperatures are that hot, this beverage is uh, what's, what's, uh, what's going off the shelves. Um, and also to be able to tell, you know, there's a particular shelf that perhaps needs to be uh, replenished. You don't need to be on the site. Mm. And then I think the very, I mean, one of the very key key ones I think that I learned from the last 14 months is again an SME can actually work from home right I mean the <laughs> yeah I mean every time you thought about you know I, I need to go to work right it's you know get up uh, get in get into a form of transportation drive to a location today's probably get up have a cup of coffee open one door and you're you're in the office. And a lot of the uh, SMEs, and indeed even corporates, yes. today are using this, um, this very same model, yes. right? Now, also because you no longer have these virtual concrete buildings, right? And maybe you're running a business remotely. The very final one, final thought that comes to mind is security, yes. right? Even as, as an SME or as a businessman, even as a corporate guy, I perhaps might want to know what's happening at home if I have children, right? Yeah. And today, digitization makes that possible. You can have a home surveillance system mm -hmm. with a set of either IP cameras or IP DVRs yeah. connected and you can actually view in real time what's happening either at home or in your remote business. Yeah. Now, all of this is possible with the advancement of technology, mm -hmm. right? And with Airtel, I mean, we've got a 4G network that guarantees super fast internet connectivity that's reliable, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You've got options that are over fiber, mm -hmm. over microwave with dedicated fixed links, mm -hmm. either as a leased line or uh, dedicated internet. And if you're a person like me who takes security quite uh, Quite seriously, you probably have options of uh, looking up uh, uh, an IPsec uh, uh, or umbrella security uh, from some vendors like the ones we have collaborations with, like uh, um, Cisco, right? I mean, so for those who may not know, I mean, IPsec sometimes is also called VPN. It's 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 it's, it's that kind of technology that aids secure your data. So that once it's being transmitted, you don't have people looking into it that shouldn't, yeah. right? Banks use it. Okay. 
you as an individual, as an SME, can have it. Mm -hmm. You can have it with products that are bundled with Airtel internet to have a secure connection. Those are my thoughts, Kata. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Alan. I, I like it. Uh, you, you mentioned something on internet connectivity and, and rightfully the past year's growth has been has been triggered poss uh, possibly because of internet penetration and the adaptation of broadband services and the increased usage of the, the smartphone. And, and telecoms are certainly going to be the ones at the forefront driving this in partnership with, with different organizations to actually push that agenda forward. So from, from your perspective, how well placed are telecoms in, in making sure that we actually are able to meet the needs of the people because as people adapt to this new way of living a new way of work it's more out from your brick and brick and mortar to more online so how best placed are and how affordable are such, so some of these solutions to smes because that would be a, a major concern to to the smes yeah i think um and, and, I'll, and I'll refrain from talking about the industry i don't know what's what's happening with my competitors but mm. uh i think if i speak for airtel mm -hmm. right how best placed is Airtel uh, uh, to provide, to make this space, all these, pos all these things uh, possible, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, if, I, if I talk, if I look at investment, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. at Airtel, we've invested over 2,000 sites mm -hmm. across Uganda, right? Yes. On 2G, 3G, mm -hmm. and 4G, right? Okay, okay. okay? So we cover at least maybe more than 92% of the land mass mm. in Kampala from a GSM perspective, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, if I go to my village today, if mm. uh, where I actually have a farm, I have 4G connectivity, right? Uh, I don't know about you, Tony, but I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure in, in Lira. In Lira, there is. I, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, so you can see from a... From a from, from a site, from a site uh, investment perspective, yeah. I think we've gotten the sites closer to the landmass yeah. and we keep investing in new sites every single year, yeah. right? Yeah. In terms of our fiber footprint, I mean, we've got over 4,000 kilometers okay. of fiber okay. Okay, deployed across, across the country, okay? Uh, we've got a very, uh, very uh, healthy uh, network on the enterprise side. Mm. Okay, today with products, right, that we supply customers such as Stanbeck, okay, on the uh, on the fixed side. Mm -hmm. But we also have products that are fixed. You know, if you're talking about a business, many of the businesses think about, you know, a fixed cost. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so the ones that are particular for fixed cost, we've got products that are available even for an SME for as low as 350,000 shillings a month. Fixed okay. internet connectivity, uninterrupted for the whole month. Mm. Uh, that's available at yeah. Airtel. Yeah. Uh, we've got broadband, right? We've got this broadband, uh, broadband, uh, Packages with a uh, I mean, it's also not a fixed fixed uh, service, yeah. but uh, it's uh, over 4G, right? So yeah. it's it's more affordable. You can get a bundle at super speeds, 100,000 shillings gets you 50 50 GB a month, yeah. right? So if you're a low a low consumption kind of a Business. SME, yeah. maybe you only use it for for uh, for email or perhaps your system is already integrated to the e-free system from your yeah. I mean so that 50 GB would probably be a, enough yeah. uh, to take you through the uh, through through through, through the bath yeah. so when I think about it uh, I mean in terms of investment I think we we and indeed other players in the, in the industry mm -hmm. uh, investing yeah. uh, and will continue investing in the country um, to provide, to bring the services closer, mm -hmm. uh, and also affordability, right? So mm -hmm. I, I think without a doubt, if you're looking at affordability and quality, yeah. I, I think I'm almost bold enough to say, you know, uh, I think Airtel <laughs> is definitely the, uh, <laughs> the, the, partner the, the, the partner of choice, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alan. Yeah. Thank you. Much appreciated. Now, on to you, Tony. Uh, your work involves creating opportunities for SMEs, and we can argue that, that the Stanbeck incubator 
is all about that. How do we upskill SMEs and how do we enable them take advantage of opportunities that they haven't been taking advantage of? So what would be your comment on e-commerce and digital connectivity? Okay, uh, so let me just take off my mask so I can be audible enough. Yeah. Um, I'm actually glad that you asked the question because now it's no longer just, just about standing yeah. I think now it's about standing to give it an FSM. We signed a, 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 an agreement. I don't want to call it an MOU. A <laughs> partnership agreement, yeah. which actually uh, puts us together now in the mainframe. I mean, if you think about his network, this yeah. guy has about 25,000. It's small. See, it's he has even an update. Oh, oh. <laughs> As of today. I think he needs to get to. That, that was like two years back. Two years back. <laughs> two years back. So he needs to get onto the 5G to update that. Right? Yes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, think about it this way. What yeah. we do with SMEs is to support SMEs to grow, to thrive. Yeah. But one thing or one spanner that was thrown in the works was last year's COVID. Yes. Everything changed yeah. around March. Yeah. I mean, everything changed. For businesses, mm. I mean, many people had never thought about this. Everyone assumed that to have a business, you had to have a shop, yeah. you had to have a store somewhere, yes. you had to have uh, a payment through a check, <laughs> yeah, or someone cash. had to send you money or cash, <laughs> yes. or, 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 or the customers coming. I remember sitting with uh, the gentleman from Casita, uh, what's his name? Um, Sechito. Sechito, Issa Sechito. Mm. And this is Issa Sechito saying, <laughs> For the first time ever, as a Musuzi, <laughs> he had to learn how to market his stuff on Facebook. Okay. Facebook. Now, this is a guy who probably had never even used Facebook before. Yeah. This was not something for him to really get into. But you kind of see that the trickle-down effect from a typical SME all yeah. the way down to your Musuzi, your normal guy. Yeah. He's actually embracing this. And I think that's why, I mean, if you look around most malls or supermarkets or whatever, you'll find a lot of empty spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Business has changed. The whole digitization, and by the way, a lot of the digitized uh, or digitization processes that have happened yeah. may never go back. We are stuck in them. Mm. I mean, look at me right now. I'm working as I am, you know, here. Yeah. And <laughs> back in the day, you would need to see Otoo in a physical meeting yes. to assume I'm <laughs> working. Now. You understand? Yes. And again, studies have actually proven yeah. that for most businesses, especially the corporate kind of businesses, staff are more um, 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 uh, um, uh, are more productive. Okay. Yeah walking away from office. Okay. So you'll find that uh, if Martha was the person who used to kill my energy, now <laughs> I actually have that. But all of these are made possible yeah. by digitization processes. Yeah. And I think in the SMEs kind of space, what we are seeing now is things are changing. At the incubator, I'll tell you one interesting thing. We were very much brick and mortar, you call it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Where we, you come, we train you in a classroom setting, and we, you know, mm. old school way. Yeah. Hey, when the lockdown <laughs> happened, we had to, you know, so we had to go digital. Yeah. And you know what was so funny? A guy who drives all the way to the incubator uh, to train uh, in his big car uh, would say, guys, this internet is too expensive, I cannot. I would say, but of course. Yeah. For five G, for five thousand, you can buy one GB yeah. and yeah. online the whole yes. day. What are you saying? And the guy says, oh, really? Yeah. You know? But it, 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 of course, had to be, to be a, a thing of a paradigm shift. Yes. You know, because people had never experienced this. Yes. People knew that, you know, internet was for WhatsApp, yeah. videos and all this. Mm. But now, internet is for everything. everything. Yeah. And for the businesses, we've now seen that in the change in how they um, uh, deliver their goods, the route to market kind yeah. of space. We've seen it how, in, in how they uh, actually run or engage with their customers, how they advertise, mm -hmm. how they sell their products, like yeah. you just mentioned. Yeah. But more importantly, the, 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 the business owner them, uh, himself has also had to jump onto this. Yeah. You do realize back in the day you would have a digital marketing team that would do all of these things, huh? <laughs> but you see, most businesses are run by, as you know, the so one person. you find that as you, 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 you also have to get involved in this process, which means you have to understand how to use data, yeah. understand how to use the best digital platforms to actually do your business. But what is very interesting for SMEs and what we have seen um, is it has now become more important for us to one of the modules that we had never thought about mm -hmm. was how you know google locations and google business you know the google business kind of thing yeah, yeah. we had never thought about this yeah but now it's important because if i wanted to come to mother's business i just go online boom the pin is there the direction everything yeah and by the way this is for free but people have never known this no 
So I think a lot is transforming and telecoms are going to play a huge role in trying to make this yeah. easy and affordable. Yeah. We were talking about uh, in Lira, for instance, when I go to Lira, mm -hmm. I thank God that my mast is probably the only guy in the facility <laughs> who's using it. So my speeds are very fast. But, no, 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 seriously. My speeds are so fast that you would think I'm in LA. So, so, so I, I think for me it's a great thing. And, yeah. and, and, and the more we embrace these things, yeah. uh, will also mean that there's more demand now from your side. Yeah. Yeah. My cousin in the village, who had never been on social media and all these platforms, is yeah. on Instagram. Now, <laughs> he's now on Instagram, which means he's now going to start using your services more. Yeah. He start, he's going to start, you know, having a demand for better services. Mm. So again, now it comes back to the telecoms now to improve on how this yeah. comes back to the yes. to, comes into the business space. But I think this has really, really changed, and I'm really glad that these conversations are now taking place. As really, if we're talking about the fourth industry revolution, all these yeah. things that yeah. everyone keeps talking about, it's very important for us to understand that things won't go back to the past. You know, we just now have to accept that it's a new normal. Yeah. I know that word has never been used. You know, you know, yeah. one of the words that has never been used. <laughs> it's uh, it's the 2020 people, motto, isn't it? Words that have been overused in the last year. <laughs> can you hear me? Can you, can you see my screen? You're on mute. Um, can, you, uh, can you all mute if you're not talking? I mean, but also now, the yeah. whole digitization conversation, I think, is going to be a, a, a very, very uh, key one. Yeah. yeah. But Tony, you mentioned something that is very interesting because we've seen it over the years, the past year when mobile money had just been introduced and we're trying to encourage people to adopt yeah. a cashless type of economy and, and, and a cashless way of transacting. Yeah. But there is the whole mindset saying, I want cash, yeah. I want to feel the cash because yeah. people are so focused on the cost of using mobile money as opposed to the the convenience or, or, or how it facilitates certain services without you having to necessarily be there right. and takes away the, the, the whole insecurity bit of cash. So the, the, the point you mentioned of where someone says I'm driving yeah. but they can't see that yeah. you could convert the fuel money to, yeah, to, to, to data is quite interesting. So how, how do you think it's we can a, actually enhance? It's a paradigm shift. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like telling a person that, you know, on your phone you can talk to a doctor yeah. and he can actually tell you what's going on. Yes. But you see, John here, and I know John actually does it, John would like to go and see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor sees him. <laughs> 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 no, but, but, but you understand what I'm coming from? Yeah. Because people, people, yeah. people <laughs> phone, you can actually put in your air, whatever is happening in your body. Yeah. And a doctor on the other side, digitally, will say, I think you need to do this and whatever. Yeah. It's a paradigm shift. Yeah. People are not used to so many things. And a lot of these things are happening very Fast, fast, you know. Yes. So it's going to take a time. It's going to take a lot of time for people to appreciate it or whatever. I mean, my father now is on WhatsApp, of course. But <laughs> that is the worst mistake we ever did because now he's a most annoying guy. He's a waste of time. But you see, you okay? that is not what we have to live with. Yeah. I mean, if you don't chat in a day, the guy is like, is everyone okay? Is there someone dead? You know that. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> It's a paradigm shift yeah. and it will take time, you know, some, not everyone is at the same pace. If you spoke to young people who are with, uh, between 18 to 25, they're so yeah. fast. I mean, they, you don't even need to explain to them the importance of that. These are kids who have been coding for years, so they understand it. Yeah. But if you spoke to Tony and Tora, ha, it's, you know, it's a whole process, you yeah. know. Yeah. And this is something we need to appreciate. You know, not everyone is at the same level. We have to do it gradually and it will have to be a process yeah. yeah so what do you think we can do differently as as the telecoms the incubators the the federation what we can do yeah more information and making it as comprehensible as possible okay. more information if you talk about 5g what is 5g i remember when the vaccination was coming <laughs> in and people were saying it's 5g right <laughs> yeah. but you see, <laughs> you see it's, it's really about making this information accessible and yeah very uh, 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 basic for yeah. a lot of people to understand yes. where it's coming from. I mean, if a guy talks about coding, you think, oh my God. But I saw some young guys doing coding that time, and I was like, even, even me, I can do, the, I can I can do it. <laughs> so I think it's really about how we also put out this information. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Tony. So, Joseph. John. Uh, jo sorry, John. Why did they call you Joseph? I, I don't know. <laughs> I apologize for that. So, John, um, so you work directly with the SMEs under, under the Federation. Mm. So, what would, you, how, what, what would be your comment, comment on e-commerce and digital connectivity? Okay. Firstly, I want to thank Airtel mm. for organizing this. And I think Alan has stated the great services that you offer 
So in return for inviting me, I want to emphasize. <laughs> 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 yeah, so <laughs> you mentioned you have very nice 4G network, over 2,000 sites countrywide, 92 coverage of uh, the landmass of Uganda, fiber footprint 4,000 kilometers. So this is very, very impressive. And um, yeah, I want to thank you for that great work. So I want to say that the Federation of SMEs is the umbrella for all micro, small, and medium sized enterprises. Right now, we have over 112,000 members countrywide in 20 different sectors. Uh, our role is to ensure that we know where the SME is because you cannot treat what you don't know really. And that sometimes I feel that people are trying to diagnose, diagnose and treat things that the country really appreciates. So we want to be an aggregate of opportunities for SMEs. We want to be a voice for the concerns uh, of SMEs. Now, talking about e-commerce and internet connectivity. It's interesting. Everyone is interconnected yeah. now, and we can no longer live our lives in the analog era. Remember when the internet was shut down? Yeah. Everything came to a standstill. I mean, you imagine, oh, it's the mobile money operator. No, all of a sudden, <laughs> you can't pay your workers, you can't pay for electricity, you can't pay for water. So you're, you're literally stuck. Yeah. So, for instance, I have to tell my people in the office, just go home and kill it. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing to do. You could switch on the machine and then you can't really work. Your <laughs> files are backed up on the cloud and stuff like that. So, yeah. so it's very extensive, really. And I think the people are hurt the most by some of, you know, s lack of connectivity are the poorest, the micro, small, medium, uh, particularly the micro businesses in rural areas. There's also a second shift that people ought to appreciate the shift towards e-government, mm -hmm. okay? Now, it's no longer a choice, you know? W you buy a car, then they just give you a book. So where's the logbook? <laughs> no, it's the paper. <laughs> 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 so I had to complain. No, we used to have our logbooks, so I just give you a paper. Yes. Anyone can just photocopy. No, you know, because that time you would say the car, they give you a logbook, say, now I own it. Yeah. All of a sudden, say, no, it's just this paper. Just photocopy and take. Your ownership is online, yeah. okay? So. You are a, a, you can't really pay tax if you're not online. You can't register a business anymore. You can't pay for utilities. You can't market effectively, really, if you're not online. You can't make payments. So that's the world that we are in. Now, I would say after COVID-19, we are seeing a quick transition for businesses in urban areas. It's very easy. The access is good. They know and things like that. The challenge is rural areas. And I want to emphasize here that uh, Airtel, you're doing a great work in putting in place the necessary infrastructure. We need to work together to address issues of digital illiteracy and lack of skills. Okay? You have a phone, you don't know how best to use it to accomplish all these things. So as a federation, we are in fact some form of foreign, I've been working with the Uganda Communications Commission over time. Now like four years to support SMEs in this aspect of digital literacy. It's very interesting. How do you use a phone? How do you post on Facebook? How do you register a business on Google, like he mentioned? How do you use Twitter? Hmm? Even me, I'm a culprit. <laughs> See? How do you. Hmm? Just a few words, but. Yes, what do you write? Hmm? <laughs> yes. How do you. What is the hashtag? You know? You hear people saying hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> what's, what's this? Hmm? Yes. So people need to be yeah. made digitally. Oh yeah, yeah. particularly uh, micro businesses. Yes. Second is the issue of affordability. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alan mentioned that we have a very cheap product. It's three hundred and fifty thousand per month. Affordable. Oh, oh affordable. <laughs> 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 Sorry, <laughs> affordable. Okay. It depends on the final. I say I want to say let's try to see how we can make this product even more affordable, affordable. Yeah. for people at the bottom of the pyramid yes micro businesses in rural areas yes and uh, and so on you know the federation is doing some work with refugees but it's it's interesting <coughs> started getting emails from these refugees it was on your site i saw this uh -huh. and like no we thought they were completely disconnected they were concerned <laughs> about food water yes, yes. and world food program yeah 
Yeah. All of a sudden, they're sending us emails. So it shows that there's an interest, mm -hmm. particularly as you have younger people, there is an interest. So my, mm -hmm. my sense would be there's need for collaboration. Yeah. If we are to help the sector to digitally transform. Yeah. Uh, collaboration from policy makers. We want to have policies that are conducive. Mm -hmm. We don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot. Mm -hmm. And as a federation, we've been very strict on this issue. As you know, I've been at the forefront of telling government, look, what it doesn't help matters. We've told them this 12% excise duty, you, you're not helping matters. You tax the pod you understand the dynamics because also as a tax authority, you shouldn't be left behind. Don't tax the root, tax the production. Tax me when I've sold online. Don't tax me because I've appeared. Because yes. I may appear when I'm announcing a funeral of my father, and then you tax. <laughs> Yet, <laughs> me, I want you to tax me when I'm actually selling. Eh? So, th it means that the, our t tax authorities also need to become more digitally smart. How do we tax online business? And I think this is the problem. That's why we are getting all these flat taxes. Remember, one of the government's pillars, government has changed its strategy towards programmatic based budgeting. Yeah. One of the programs is digital transformation. Yes. So you're talking about digital transformation, it means people are left behind. Let everyone come on board fast. Yes. Okay? Yes. So that, that is our appeal. Uh, we are also appealing that, uh, you know, let cost for devices come down somehow. Mm -hmm. Whatever we do, let's make sure the cost of devices come down. Yes. And let's have those collaborations between the Federation and uh, Airtel, between the Federation and Stanbic Incubator, because in that way we can create um, synergies that can help us to attain our results. Finally, as very it's very interesting that you are talking about issues of business intelligence and data analytics. I think this is very, very important, particularly for businesses as they make decisions. Because I was speaking to a lady and she was saying, you know, I was paying for my um, shop 2.5 million. Now I'm selling all my stock on Instagram. No rent. <laughs> so yeah, so this uh, it's it's what it is. So cases here that was collecting a license from the shop. How are you going to collect license from the Instagram seller? This is the trick. That's why now the regulation has to also kind of keep yeah shift and also keep pace with the developments. Uh, in the sector. So I think that's, and finally, uh, as a federation, we are working with different stakeholders. Yeah. At the moment, we are concluding an MOU with Rocket Health for e health services. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for e health services, so that SMEs have no business looking for clinics. They just go. <laughs> They just call the doctors and so on and so forth. You didn't have to say that before. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, I think, I think it's a very interesting product <laughs> that I need to be aware of. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, John. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned the cost of devices. We've actually seen a change and a shift in the market on, mm -hmm. on saying people have to now uh, purchase a smartphone, hands down cash, yes. not on credit. In, in Airtel, we actually do have a, a product that we run called Quata Esimuyo. With, with MasterCard, where you can now purchase your, your, your phone yes. on installment basis. Yes. And we're actually seeing that transforming the usage of a smartphone and the, the acquiring of a smartphone. Yes. And, and that will actually drive digital penetration because the feature phone can only do so much. So once we get the smartphone out there and, and get my grandmother in, in, in Soroti yes. to actually use that phone, yes. then I will know I've done my job with Airtel. That will be a very interesting way to see it. Yes, I'm yeah. talking about Soroti. We have the digital literacy training yeah. in Soroti, and we hope your grandmother can. She had better be there, because yeah. I will ask her. <laughs> Did you yeah. get a phone call from John? Yeah, so it's very. So I think as a as a federation, we completely want this package yeah. to ensure that we because just training someone to become digital and yeah. leaving him there doesn't help. Yes, you must provide the solution. Yeah, yeah, we have trained on how to use the phone here. It is paying installments by. Yeah. Then we can track how yes. we're using. Yeah. And I mean, Martha, if you allow me, I mean, mm. you, on the point of uh, bringing the smartphone devices uh, mm. closer, right? Yes. I think it's a very important point because, I mean, I was just pondering here, we're having a conversation around SMEs, right? Mm. But then I thought, you know, there's a sector that has been locked down uh, since March last year.
mm. right? Okay, it's partially open, but uh, I mean, education sector, mm. right? Yeah. Mm. I mean, I've got two young ones, right? One is four, the other is turning three, yeah, yeah. right? They're not being able to go to school. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Okay? I've been at home but, too anyway, much. But, but, it's, but, it's, but it's amazing how, I mean, I'm one of the perhaps a few fortunate ones that can afford uh, a smartphone for, yeah. for, for a toddler, right? Mm -hmm. But it's amazing, you know, uh, when, when the schools were being closed, my oldest was, had just started preschool. The younger one, of course, hadn't yet, uh, she, was, she was two, uh, no, she was turning, she was one and something. Yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I don't know my, then, then, and my wife is watching this, it'll be a bit of a uh, spanking getting home. But I mean, uh, during this one year, right, uh, my youngest has used the smartphone to go through YouTube, uh, look at programs like Peppa Pig and stuff like that. And she's taught herself to, to, to say the alphabet, to count, colors, stuff like that. So maybe we should think even a bit more broader than just, I mean, I don't think schools fall under SME, but, uh, but uh, I think definitely uh, if this is going to go on, and I mean, there was talk of a second wave and stuff like that, I mean, definitely here at Airtel, I need to think of, you know, how, how do we again perhaps reach out to even customers or consumers that perhaps we thought would be consumers in a few years, but maybe they're consumers today. today yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, the, the thought came when he was talking about the uh, rocket health. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, it's clinics on the phone. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you can move away from education, go straight into agriculture. Agriculture today, I mean, you'll find your local farmer doesn't need to, you know, because, I mean, we, we, we've been promised a lot about this, ex <laughs> this, this extension. Don't actually show up. So, <laughs> it's actually easier now to have your smartphone. Take a picture of what, what's happening with your, if it's coffee wilt, you know, take a picture and then have it sent to some, you know, location or whatever. And you get feedback on what to do with that plant. Yeah. Yeah. And that, for me, is the future. And, and things are not going to change because, I mean, you think about it now. Uh, I was just talking to someone who was talking about blockchain where, you know, you can actually do so many transactions and how to run your farm off a platform. Mm -hmm. And you know what's so interesting? The guys in the rural communities are actually embracing this faster than the guys in the urban areas when it comes to agriculture. So I think for me, I, I, I see this as, a, as something that is not going to change anytime soon. It's going to, we, we, we just have to embrace it. Yeah. But also when I was, uh, I was just looking through and thinking about some of the things that have changed and that might not change again or, or go back. Yeah. You know, the increase in the use of advanced technologies in operations. Mm. You know, back in the day we were very manual, huh? yeah. and now we have included technology in how we operate. So you find that now, more than ever, we're spending more on security, for instance, internet yeah. security, for instance, because now you have so much stuff on the cloud. Yeah. Forget about <laughs> opening up files and cabinets, right? Yes. Now, yeah. a lot of stuff is on the cloud because if a guy is working from home, yeah. you're not going to tell him, well, let's link up somewhere. And, you, you know, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so many things are happening in that space. And I think this, for me, is a very, very interesting, um, um, yeah. very interesting step in how things are happening. Yeah. yeah. It would be very interesting to see how we actually cope. And I, I want to go back to John because he had raised something quite important on, on, on the policies and, and making sure that our tax authority and our governments are actually moving alongside mm. us. We've been hearing a lot of chatter uh, in, 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 in the area on, on data tax and moving from OTT to data tax now. <coughs> and, and you could easily argue that that will certainly stifle the internet penetration across. So it's, it's just more to understand because now everything is going online. What, what are we doing about that in, in, in that in that regard? So we have been, uh, so the Federation is working with a number of other actors and what they call the Tax Justice Alliance. Uh, we want government to collect tax, but we do not want tax that is self-defeating. Okay? Because remember, uh, we have about 64% youth unemployment. And our young people are literate, they are smart. And our young people are online. 
let's allow the internet to be used as a force for good, for job creation. Because um, if we don't do that, then we, we are not helping matters. We've identified digital transformation as a tool through which we can. This is government's own policy anyway. Um, so government has stated very clearly we want digital transformation to be one of the pillars of our growth in the next five years. So that being the case, your tax policy should be aligned with your objectives. And the purpose of tax is to either encourage or discourage certain activities. For instance, at the moment, government is pursuing a policy of import substitution. So it means that there are products that it has imposed an import duty on, on purpose to ensure that Ugandans start to rely on locally made products. And for me, I'm happy with that. Um, if it's this, if it's that, if we short term pain, but long term, we'll build our own capacity. But for, tech, for, for data, I think we are doing very badly in my view, because as a federation, we have members. In Agago, in Agago, electricity is off three weeks in a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> it's the truth. It's off. Three weeks in a month. So, yes, Airtel can invest in this footprint, but those things need to be resolved. But also, if we say we want to, data is integral to our growth, then we must ensure that. That way we give incentives to investors. In the same, in the 12 tax bills, government has given uh, stamp duty exemption if an investor invests more than 50 million US dollars. Why? To encourage people to bring in their money. So the reason we are opposed to this 12%, it's because it, it is not aligned to our objectives. And I think we need to speak with one voice, not because we don't want government to collect tax, but we, because we believe that some of these taxes are not going to help us long term. Yeah. yeah, thankfully, what we predicted about OTT has come to pass, yes. that you, it will be very hard for you to collect the money that you desire. Let's try to work around, let's work together. To, in fact, using data, we can expand the tax base because that's the fundamental problem. You have a lot of people who are informal. So as you bring them in, as they create a digital footprint, it's much easier now to say, oh, you, you're making this much money. Please pay up. You, you're making. But now if you, if you cut them off, it means it's going to become harder for you to literally expand the tax base. So I think there's need to work together and explain to government and say, look, uh, this needs to be changed. Thankfully, the Minister of ICT mentioned that um, th th within government, there's no, no agreement yet okay. on that actual percentage of the tax. So we hope if it's to remain, it can be 0.1 percent. We are happy with that. <laughs> 0.2 percent is fine. 12 percent is not fine. Yes. <laughs> 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 talking about uh, youth who just come out of school, right? Yeah. I mean, they already the percent, mm -hmm. right? right. I think the 12% could very easily be a deterrent, mm -hmm. I right. think, right? Because it's, if it's a person who said, you know, I don't want to go into, uh, I don't want to leave the kind of uh, career that Tony uh, has taken going through the corporate ranks and says, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I mean, this 12% could actually kill a really otherwise yeah. promising yeah. innovative business that yeah. could actually employ thousands of people tomorrow yeah. because of this here. So I, I think you've got a uh, quite a healthy point there. Yeah, but These new linkages that we're seeing coming up because of this mm. um, <laughs> Let me first start by saying, did you know that preachers today love the internet now? <laughs> 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 and they actually reach more flock yes. than before. Because you see, back in the day you would preach and sing and dance for your 20 guys. Now... <laughs> Who, who knows how many people are actually watching? So yeah. it's about how you promote your, yeah. your, 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 your mission. Yeah. But I think for me, this is going to be very interesting and transformational for yeah. most businesses. Yeah. Because it's, like I said, we're not going back. We just have to embrace this. Payment solutions. You know, nowadays I, I hardly move with cash, for yeah. instance. Because I know I'm just going to either tap my card or pay using uh, uh, my phone or whatever, you know. And you know what is interesting, actually, in most developed economies, you'll actually find that uh, they're developing our watch, an I, an I, uh, the, you know, this, the, the iPhone watch, right? Yes. Where you can actually pay using your watch. Mm. All of these things are getting interestingly 
crazier every single day, <laughs> man. You know, yeah. sometimes you buy a watch and you think it's the latest. Then tomorrow, the, 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 I mean, you guys know this thing. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you get a smartphone and you go and brag in your village and then by the time you come to town, there's another one. But you see, <laughs> we just really have to now work with these things. Yeah. And for businesses, it's going to be important for them to really work around transforming themselves and adapting. Because you see, all these are happening in a very short time. Yeah. And that requires businesses to be bold. Yes. You know, but also being vulnerable. You know, it's, it's important also to understand that you do not know. So how do, uh, what, do, what do you have to do to know? You know, not this whole attitude of uh, you understand? You have to really demystify that and become vulnerable and say, how can I do this to make my business grow? I was with a lady who sells uh, children's clothes in Tinder. And she's complain. this was two months ago. She was complaining that customers are not coming as they were coming two years ago. The customers, and I'm thinking, for lack of a better word, I mean, tulukuchi. You understand, <laughs> huh? Because by now, you should be able to be advertising and having your, I'm forgetting even about just going around your small group, because now, social media, all these other platforms have given you an opportunity to, and, and by the way, it's interesting, you know, you can actually <laughs> bombard, you know, you know when you're in a group of serious people discussing the <laughs> you can actually just throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> if you're, there, there's a shop which said, but, but I mean, although you're thrown out, you're still advertised. But it's an opportunity. <laughs> you know, it's an opportunity. And I think this is what we really need to understand that these things are here. They're yeah. here to stay. Yeah. We need to embrace them. We need to adapt and take them on for our businesses. Route to market. You know, um, there was a guy who we were training. This guy would come and tell you, I have several trucks, I'm delivering beers to this location, whatever. So we sat down and he sat down with some of our young, we, we, we work with Refactory when it comes to supporting on IT and mm -hmm. developing apps and all these things for these guys. And we asked the guy, uh, do you really think you're making money? And to be truthful, he was wasting a lot of money because, I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to Jones Kaduka to take two crates of beer, but you move 10 kilometers to just drop two and then go to the next location mm -hmm. and do the same. What we found out was that by supporting him on his route to market technology, creating you know, this whole uh, accessibility to internet and all of that, he could actually use a Boda Boda to deliver some, some of the deliveries. He did not necessarily need to use a truck or a big yeah. truck for that. So I think for us, what we see is we now need the internet more than ever. We need technology more than ever. We need digitization more than ever. Businesses will have to adapt, will have to embrace it, and it's the way to go. I mean, you're talking about this route to market uh, thing. I mean, the other thing that, I mean, when you look at the guys who are delivering uh, these crates or whatever, they deal with a huge amount of cash, right? Yes. Now, yes. in an environment, I mean, times have been very hard for the last, I don't know, 15 months, yeah, okay? Yeah. It makes people desperate, right? Yes. So it means also handling yeah. a lot of cash becomes... <laughs> It becomes a, it's a critical yeah. sound on, yeah. on its own, yeah. right? Now, again, digitization of money, right? On platforms such as Airtel Money today, right? Yeah. It means a restaurant somewhere or a shop, a duka somewhere, yeah. can actually make payment to their distributor via Airtel Money or via digital payment, get the stock moved, and then this distributor at the end of the day can again push that money out of his Airtel wallet mm -hmm. to his mm -hmm. account, maybe at Stambik. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I mean, again, this is all transformation. I mean, yeah. uh, look at all these route to market companies. A lot of them are SMEs. Right. Yeah, if you yeah. look at a distributor or franchise partner, these are SMEs. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then you also, I mean, something else that just came to mind, right? A lot of the time, you know, SMEs try to look for quality product and stuff like that. One of the things, for the unbanked, right, has been, you know, I've seen this great deal online, but all these online shops are saying, you know, uh, you, do you have Visa or Mastercard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, Airtel has actually come up with a partnership with Mastercard, Mastercard. Yeah. meaning today, I mean, I, and it was so simple. I mean, I managed to register for my, my uh, virtual mastercard uh, uh within 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 minutes right straight out of my airtel airtel uh, airtel money app right i registered now i have a mastercard that i can actually use online 
right? So even if I didn't have a bank account, but I have an Airtel money account, which is basically my phone and my mobile number, I mean, I can basically look at a particular item I want to bring in. Maybe it could be new stock, or it could even be a spare part for something I need to, uh, to may or maybe office improvement or something of the sort. Place some money on Airtel money, use my MasterCard, and boom, yeah. I am right in the digital space. Yeah. The paradigm shift, the paradigm shift. And again, you know, you just talked about agency banking and whatever. You'll find a guy who goes into the banking hall. There's an agency banker next door. But, you know, because he wants to see the teller, and the teller tells him, Center Zayingi Day. Yeah? Mm -hmm. He pays and says, Center Zayingi Day. He won't trust that. So it's a poor paradigm <laughs> yeah. shit. And we have to work around that. <laughs> <laughs> so be, you know, no, no, seriously. You, know? you, know, you, you find a guy, say, but you know, the agency bank, say, ah, I, I, I was to two money, you know. We want to go to, <laughs> yes. to the other guy. So I think that's very, <laughs> very, very important. Yeah. yeah. We have seen quite a lot of that, actually. In, in the banking sector, we used to work with a bank, one of the banks in, in the country. And the feedback from, from our older type of clients was always, no, no, I come to the bank mostly because it's a personal connection and I, I need to actually make sure that the money has moved. Mm -hmm. Using the ATM was also quite difficult. So I can imagine what it's like to now yeah. shift that to a mobile <laughs> phone. It makes it so much difficult yeah. for, for everyone to do, yes. There is actually a certain joy in signing that check. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and looking at the first sense that. of satisfaction <laughs> about the yeah. money. Yeah. But you know, obviously, this is this has to change because it's uh, it's what it is. And I needed to mention that. Yeah. Um, I, I want to tell SMEs also that digitalization presents both opportunities and you mentioned very many opportunities, yeah. but also risks. Yes. How? Um, competition yeah. it means someone in Namibia can start yeah. selling stuff here. Yeah. 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 So if you are on the defensive and you are there still in your shop waiting for Mama <laughs> Gundi to come and buy from you, <laughs> meanwhile Mama Gundi is ordering things from <laughs> Namibia, <laughs> Botswana and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, so you, you, you can actually be wiped out. Yeah. Yes. You know, when, uh, when I first went um, to Europe, I would find it interesting. I would enter a restaurant and there's one guy. Okay. Okay. People come in, they order, they get out their phone, they do tap. They get their things, they go. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, come with your money. With cash. You try to explain to him. You wonder what are they doing exactly. Okay. Because... You know, so they would, you eat a McDonald's, two people. Mm -hmm. People come, they, they order, they get the food, they eat, they put the things, they go. <laughs> and for you, are still explaining, I need this, I need chicken. <laughs> so it means that many SMEs can use um, the digital infrastructure yeah. to cut down on their costs. Yes. Okay? You enter a restaurant and you find 20 people running in all kinds of directions. Yeah. But you're no seated, you're waiting you. for, you <laughs> want to make an order, they are all running <laughs> around you. There's a lot of inefficiency. Yes. And then you can actually have the menus right off the menu. Yes, QR yes. Code. yes. Yeah, QR code, yeah. people order, and, you know, so I think th there's also that opportunity that they can use. Yeah. But there's also a really a risk because yeah. if it means you really have no choice. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's that thing where they have to... You say you have to either go digital or you either have to go digital. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're, you're, done. you're going to be sorted. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, right now, we want to move on to the next part of the session where we have a couple of SMEs that are lined up basically to give us the experience of, of digital uh, connectivity and e-commerce, how it has basically shifted the way they were doing business and just to see how we can what best practice we can actually pick from them so online we've got uh alan from ranya mahembe i'm really hoping i said that correctly ranya mahembe sako uh, alan if you're online please uh unmute yourself and just talk us through your 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 experience with uh e-commerce and digital connectivity we also have ronald from boy BOI7, Boy7, Communications from Kasese. So, Alan or Ronald, are you there? Okay. 
uh, Alan from Ranya Mahembe and uh, Ronald from Boy7. If you're there, please unmute your, your microphone. Oh, 2020 words. Huh? Unmute oh, your yeah, microphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and let's, yeah. <laughs> if, if, if you're there, please unmute your microphone. Okay, so I think, I think uh, we're probably having some technical difficulties around that. But um, as, as, we, as we move to the Q&A session, I, I don't know whether you have any, any other remarks that you'd like to, to put out there. No. We're good. <laughs> okay, so... Hmm, what can I say? So I think um, as I want to emphasize the issue of collaboration. Yeah. Very, 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 very difficult because uh, there are SMEs that are simply distrustful of new things. Mm. Um, so how do you collaborate to build that confidence and to be able to bring them along and to be able to make sure that you give them a rounded, uh, rounded service? So that collaboration between telcos, financial institutions, uh, entrepreneurship support organizations like ourselves, uh, and then other civil society groups. How do we create that synergy that can be able to lead to great successes? And I think if we do that, then we are good to go. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jonathan. And anything else to add? No, um, I mean, apart from just saying, you know, uh, we are probably living in a time where, I mean, the world is shifting, right? We've had, I mean, I think almost every time the world has gone through some sort of a difficult time, those that have been prepared for it coming out of that time have actually thrived. I think we are, we are at that point in humanity where the fourth industrial revolution is happening. It's a digital revolution and I guess first as a teleco, we need to position ourselves in the best way to serve uh, the country, serve uh, our consumers, and come up with better and more efficient ways to aid in this digital connectivity. Because the world has just become smaller and smaller. Right? And the only way that businesses will thrive here and get to the next level is by being aided with quality connections that are affordable, not cheap, but <laughs> affordable. <laughs> we could have a debate around cheap and affordable, uh, but I think it's a conversation for another day. But I think connectivity that is affordable, that is quality, that enables those businesses to extract that value. And I think I speak for Airtel when I say, you know, it's right within our DNA, right? We are, we are a company with a soul of an entrepreneur, right? And that is why a conversation around the SME, I mean, I speak with a lot of passion, right? Yeah, so I, I think we're at that point where I think as a teleco, we we, we, we need to be at the forefront, together with you, Tony and, uh, and John, I mean, to get this, to get this uh, happening. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, Alan. Tony? No, I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm good for now. <laughs> okay. So uh, we'll now switch back to the, uh, the testimonials, really. I, I believe Alan and uh, Ronald are now available. So uh, Alan or Ronald, uh, Whoever is, whoever is ready, if you could just uh, unmute your microphone and just talk us through your experience with e-commerce and digital connectivity and the opportunities that you have uh, basically gotten from this. Okay. Uh, Alan or Ronald, are you there? 
Okay, so I think with, with that uh, in particular, I think we'll, we'll, we'll just close the session. We are mindful of the fact that it's starting to rain outside and, and <laughs> I, I, know, I know how Uganda gets when it rains. So besides that, so this really marks the end of our conversation. I'd like to say thank you very much for taking the time to sit with us. It's been quite an eye-opener eye open, eye for me on certain points and, and certain things on how to take forward. And I'm hoping the SMEs who are watching have actually picked out what opportunities exist and how they can actually harness them. If you do have any questions for Alan, for, 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 for Tony or for John, please reach out to us directly on any of our social media platforms, or you can reach out directly to them. Uh, Alan with Enterprise in, in, in Airtel Uganda, Tony with uh, the, the Stand Big Business Incubator, and John with the Federation of Small and, and Medium Enterprises. We're certainly more interested in supporting you and growing your, your businesses and helping you harness these opportunities. So I'll leave you all with a quote from one of the most famous people in, in this world, Bill Gates, because we're talking about digital connectivity. It feels wrong not to mention him. So he said, if your business is not on the in internet, then you're going to be out of business. Then you're not in business. It's time for us to change and shift how we, how we perceive our businesses and how we are doing businesses. Let, no, let Tony not ask you, what are you waiting for? So, so let's, let's get on board. Let's push this and let's, let's go out there and, and be the best that we can be. Alan, I'll give you a, a moment to see if you want to comment uh, on the record keeping piece that Ronald raised. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what he's talking about is, uh, I mean, we, we actually already have a product uh, on the GSM side, mm -hmm. um, but we've usually been selling it more to the corporate, the corporate side. So it's a, it's like a sponsored or toll-free data uh, product, right? Mm -hmm. it's a, it's, it comes in either 10, uh, 6 TB or, or 10 terabyte uh, bundle. I mean, I think what I need to do is uh, myself and my team perhaps have a conversation, mm -hmm. a longer conversation with, uh, with Ronald mm -hmm. uh, to really fully understand the scope. But it's, it's, it's possible, right? So, I mean, it's okay mm -hmm. about boosters. What is, what is proposing can actually be done over 4G. Okay. Right. We can actually do it over 4G, and he doesn't have to spend money on these boosters. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Or we can do it over microwave. Yeah. Right. At the end of the day, I mean, at Airtel Business, um, uh, we don't look at providing just uh, an off-the-shelf solution. Mm -hmm. Right. We prefer to sit down with our customers, understand their need, mm -hmm. and then we provide a solution. Okay. So I'll definitely be in touch with Ronald. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ronald, good things are coming out of this webinar for you and for, for the rest of the SMEs. So um, I think with that, we are good to, to close now. I would like to say a massive thank you to Alan, Tony, and, and John again. Thank you so much for sitting down with us for this period. And, and to the audience, thank you for, for, for listening in and, and being patient with us throughout the entire session. Uh, we'll be having more of this series coming to you and we'll certainly be able to push out when they're going to happen. So look out for them and, and do let us know in case you, you want to have this more frequently. So thank you uh, and have a good day. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.